He now has the critical climate brief in Cabinet. Seems to like fracking. Calls wind turbines windmills. Wants every last drop of oil and gas from the North Sea. So Labour, SNP, Lib Dems joining Greens in seeing red, along with a host of campaigners. I think Jacob Rees-Mogg has said many things on climate change in the past that suggest he needs to go back to school on that particular issue. So the Conservative Party was completely able to choose a new Prime Minister as Liz Truss, but it can't go back on the mandate that the public gave them at the 2019 general election, which, amongst other things, had commitments from the Conservative Party to deliver net zero, to leave the environment in a better state for the next generation. Criticisms apart, we have somehow to bridge the energy gap. In the past year, just under half of the power generated in Great Britain has come from fossil fuels, nearly a third renewables, and the rest from other sources, including almost a fifth from nuclear. To hit legally binding emissions targets by 2035, it's expected fossil fuel use will drop to close to zero, with renewables massively increasing, nuclear remaining roughly the same. That's a near revolutionary energy shift. And there are three major factors, though, that mean Jacob Rees-Mogg might not be quite the disaster for closing the gap that critics predict. First, his supporters today claiming his climate scepticism is fading as the realities of physics hit home. So Rees-Mogg supporters out and about this morning saying to people he's moved on from those days of flirting with denying there is a climate emergency. The second point to note is that net zero isn't a government pledge promise. It is the law, so he and his boss are legally bound to deliver it. And the third point he'll find, if he doesn't already know it, that huge swathes of the British economy, like this farm, are way ahead of so many politicians. They want to put in solar, they want to put in wind turbines, on land renewables, and they want it as fast as possible because they see it as an opportunity not a cost, jobs, investment. But the Rees-Mogg appointment by Liz Truss looks to many like putting the boot in politically after the country saw houses ablaze with a record 40 Celsius plus heat wave this summer. Across the Channel, Europe endured its worst drought in, they say, 500 years. And 30 million people affected by floods as a third of Pakistan's inhabitable land inundated. The government's own advisory body telling Truss and Rees-Mogg in an unprecedented move, change your priorities fast if you really want to get our energy bills down. Drilling more oil and gas takes years with gas prices set globally, so that's no way to bring down bills quickly, if at all. In just eight months, these fields in Norfolk could generate 35 megawatts of clean solar power. Trouble is, the new government is against more onshore renewables. Even without that political obstacle, the red tape is staggering. This site here has been underway for probably two and a half years. It was sat uh, with the local authority planning department for uh, almost a year. Um, you know, there are some really strict targets that are set. Obviously, we've got uh, net zero targets by 2050, the government's own. Farming are going to do it by 2040. <laughs> it's not going to happen if uh, this red tape's allowed to continue to thwart uh, these developments. All that's left of one failed fracking site in Lancashire. Both Truss and Rees-Mogg appear keen on reopening fracking. This morning, near the closed Lancashire drilling site, opinions were mixed about shale gas extraction. Well, to tell you the truth, I think it wouldn't be a bad thing. You know what I mean? Uh, puts people in jobs and stuff like that, which I'm sure that everybody's ready for. Brings a bit of money into district and county. Why not? I appreciate the fact that there's issues with groundwater and stuff like that, but there's the jobs and cheaper, cheaper energy, so... It's, it's whether or not the trade-off trade is safe. Would you be concerned if they fracked around here? Yeah, because last time they were doing it, we had the, the mini shudders, and it was quite scary because I, I live just down the road and you could feel them. So at first glance, the Prime Minister supports fracking, but she says only if locals do. And thus far, often in rural Tory shires, public support is by no means a given. Well, with me now is Chris Stark, Chief Executive of the Climate Change 
committee, a publicly funded body which advises the government on how to achieve emissions targets and whose chair was the co-signatory together with the chair of the National Infrastructure Commission, Sir John Armit, um, of this punchy letter to the government today, which takes on what kind of seems to many people like common sense, which is that over the next few years, we are still going to be burning gas. Mm -hmm. It's in short supply because of the war in Ukraine. So shouldn't we do what Jacob Rees-Mogg has said and just get every last drop out of the North Sea? Well, I think the, the clues in the, the way that you asked that question, the, the underlying issue is, is that we need a lot of gas at the moment. Now, the best possible remedy is to get ourselves off gas, regardless of your view of climate change. That is a very sensible thing to do. This winter, we are going to face a very tight winter. It's going to be a very difficult period for us. There may at the margins be room to increase UK production of gas, but that will do nothing for the price of gas, which is the underlying problem that we're all about to But experience. how quickly could we increase renewables production? Because nuclear takes forever. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You've got, a, you've got a, a set of choices in front of you, and it's a good question. What is the lead time for those various choices? Now, the thing you can do immediately is ramp down demand. And that's what we see in other parts of the world, and especially across Europe. Countries like Germany, Italy, they have been focusing very hard over the summer at reducing demand for energy in the round. Now, oh. we've been wasting time, particularly by insulating homes, moving to more efficient technologies, asking industry questions about whether they need to use as much uh, energy as they have used in previous winters. We haven't been doing any of that in this country. And crucially, we can do more than that. We can ask more on the demand side, and we can also do more to generate more renewable electricity quickly and to build the infrastructure for that. But it could it, be cold by... October, frankly. I mean, we don't, we don't have time to do all of those things. Do we? we do have time to, to reduce demand for energy and to become more energy efficient as a country. That is an almost immediate route into the crisis, the, the tackling the crisis that, that lies ahead of us. You are right, though. We've been wasting time over the summer not focusing on the things that Germany and other parts of Europe have been doing. The crucial thing is we do have time. This is, not going to be, this is not going to be something that lasts for weeks. We are likely to last into the next year. The letter we've sent today highlights the fact that the OBR looks out potentially years of high gas prices. So the quicker that we can build alternative energy technologies like solar, like wind, the quicker that we start knocking off our gas consumption. The Conservative Party doesn't like onshore renewables. It, I mean, Liz Truss specifically said she doesn't like solar farms on productive land in the UK. Are you going to have to change her mind? Well, I don't think we'll have to change her mind. I think the underlying economics and, and frankly, the crisis that we're entering into will change her mind. I have to say she softened some of the messages that we saw early on in that campaign. It sounds particularly recently, she's talked about solar on, on roofs, for example. Every solar panel that we install, every solar farm that we open is going to help with this problem of our requirement for high gas. We need, we need to get more and more of these renewable technologies, which we can get to market quickly as a solution to the problem of, our, of the high gas price and our, and our requirement for gas over this winter. I mean, what could you do with £100 billion, which is what the... What, what this price freeze is going to cost? Well, who knows what the price freeze will cause? I mean, we'll, we'll all be looking forward to tomorrow to see what the price is. 150, yeah. I mean, it, could be, it could be, it's an enormous sum. Now, we could be doing a huge amount with that. Where are we to be able to flip it in a capital spending for the kind of things that will get us to the net zero target? So that would be spending particularly on insulating homes in the UK. That's been the long run problem with policy over the last To 20, solve the problem years. in a year? Not within a year, but it would make a major impact, particularly if we focused it on those homes that require it most, where people living in those homes can least afford their energy bill this winter.